Hi, so hopefully you can all hear me and see my screen okay. Um, if you could do me a favour and just pop in the chat that you can see uh, the PowerPoint presentation, which has got accredited certification as a title. Yes. Fabulous. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so welcome to this webinar on accredited certification. Uh, my name's Jennifer. I'm the Managing Director of ISO Quality Services. And today I want to take uh, you through what accredited certification is, how it differs to non-accredited certification, um, and some of the routes that uh, businesses can go to achieve this. So, right, so I'm going to run through what actually is accredited certification and who needs it. Why would a business or a company opt for accredited certification? The process of achieving accredited certification. What we here at ISO Quality Services can offer. What sorts of questions we'd be asking if a company needs um, UCAS or accredited certification and what we can offer in terms of consultancy. Um, if there are any questions at any point, we have a question and answer uh, function uh, within Zoom. So um, feel free to pop questions in there. Um, and as I see them come through, I will answer them. Okay, so just gonna give you some uh, basic information uh, with regards to what accredited certification is. So accreditation, is the independent evaluation of conformity assessment bodies against recognised standards to ensure their impartiality and competence. Sounds a bit complicated, but I promise it will make sense as we go through. What that means in terms of our industry as a ISO certification body is that it is the process of a certification body being identified as competent to provide certification to management standards by an approved body. Accreditation bodies are established in many countries with the primary purpose of ensuring that conformity assessment bodies or certification bodies in our industry are subject to an oversight by an authoritative body. Now, this sounds all very complicated, but I promise um, I'm going to kind of break it down for you. So these particular bodies sign arrangements that enhance the acceptance of products and services across national borders, creating a framework to support international trade through the removal of technical barriers. So as you know, uh, what we provide um, is ISO international standards, um, organization standards, management standards, and effectively um, they were created in order to allow companies to trade internationally. So um, kind of that's a bit of history there with regards to why they were created. So the arrangements are managed by um, a firm called the International Accreditation Forum. That's their, their logo there. And um, I've put um, a, a link there to their website. Um, and they span more than just ISO standard certification. They actually cover all sorts of testing, inspection and calibration services. So they don't just work in the certification industry. Um, the International Accreditation Forum is, is a, a group of, of every kind of Bod, uh, every country, if you like, that's coming together to, to identify what these standards are um, to allow for uh, that international trade. So to break this down, um, it's quite handy to have a, uh, a diagram. So, so effectively, the International Accreditation Forum is, is the, the, the top body there. Um, they're the organisation that manages these arrangements that have been signed by the accreditation bodies. Now, in the UK, the main accreditation body that you will come across is UCAS, so the United Kingdom Accreditation Service, not to be confused with the University UCAS, which is UCAS. Um, so in the UK, we have one sole body um, that is signed up, if you like, to the International Accreditation Forum. So UCAS has the ability, is the accreditation body, and has the ability to provide a kind of a check to the certification bodies, if you like. Um, we are what's called a non-UCAS certification body, um, but some recognisable UCAS certification bodies that there are in the UK would be the likes of BSI, SGS, LRQA. 
I've got NQA twice there actually, um, NQA, ISACAR and Certification Europe, or Interface and BAB and CCAS. So these are the, some of the, the most recognisable certification bodies in the UK that are registered with UCAS. In other countries, you have, um, so for example, in Ireland, you have INAB, the Irish National Accreditation Board. They are the equivalent of UCAS in Ireland. You have DACAS uh, for Germany um, and then the USA. So the USA and Australia, I believe, are the only two countries that have multiple recognised accreditation bodies in their country. Um, that's just because of the pure size and scale of those countries. Um, UK, Ireland, Germany, as an example, only have one. So, so basically, UCAS is it um, for the UK. But in America, I think you've got three or four different um, bodies that, that they could be uh, registered with. Um, but if we take it into the UK, the ones that you'll come across most oft often, BSI, British Standards Institute, biggest probably testing and inspection and certification body in the UK. Uh, they are authorised by UCAS, who are authorised by the International Accreditation Forum. So that's the kind of chain of uh, kind of command, if you like. So a little bit more about UCAS then. So as I've mentioned already, it is the sole national accreditation body for the UK. Um, there is some other um, forums around, uh, national forums around that, that people think um, is the same as UCAS. It's not. There is literally only one um, in the UK. Uh, and the website is at the bottom there if you wanted to go and have a look. It's actually quite a useful website to, to go on to in terms of looking for certification bodies and checking um, accreditations and things like that. So I definitely recommend having a look at that website. Uh, UCAS is recognised by the UK government to assess against internationally agreed standards, uh, organisation that provides certification, testing, inspection and calibration services. So um, UCAS does a lot more than just um, covering the, the kind of the management standards that we would work towards. Um, but that's kind of where our industry kind of sees UCAS is, is they are the only body recognised by government um, that can provide uh, that tick and crown, so that, that crown logo that you can see um, there, um, that's what they, they would be providing to the, the certification bodies. So in short, UCAS checks the checkers. They are a non-profit distributing private company. So they are completely independent of government. Um, some people think they are a government body, but they are not. They are completely independent of government, but they are non-profit distributing, which basically means that they do make a profit. Um, they are a private company, but they don't distribute it to shareholders, um, which kind of retains um, their impartiality, if you like. So UCAS becomes the assessment body for certification. So um, when they go to, say, if we, if we take BSI as an example, UCAS audit BSI, BSI audit individual companies. By having UCAS audit them, BSI must remain impartial and independent to the company that it's certifying. So what this means is that if we again if we take BSI as the example certification body once a certification body is accredited by UCAS for a certain standard so if it, for example we look at the uh, most recognized standard the ISO 9001 quality management standard once BSI has become checked by UCAS in order to deliver that standard um, to individual companies, it is unable to offer any form of advice on implementation or consultancy. So um, I, I'll come on to it in a, in a moment and do some, I've got some more diagrams for you. Um, but effectively, this means that um, the assessment um, body, the certification body, sorry, so such as BSI or NQA, whichever example we're using, um, is unable to provide any form of consultancy support. It must only conduct the, um, uh, the, the focus of an, an examination board, if you like. So it can only look at providing certification. It cannot look at supporting them to achieve that certification. Um, so therefore, this service must be completed externally. Uh, and that's normally via independent consultants, which is where we step in in, in that scenario. What's also interesting is that um, a certification body which is accredited for ISO 9001, for example, 
can still offer non-accredited certification to other standards if they wish. And there are some examples of this um, in the market. Some of the smaller certification bodies uh, may be uh, approved by UCAS to, to offer quality management, so ISO 9001 and, and environmental management, ISO 14, um, but they may well offer the um, health and safety, the ISO 45, and the information security um, as non-accredited standards. So they get accredited for each individual um, standard in their own right. And then on top of that, they also get accredited um, for um, each individual um, EA code, which is, is like the industry code. So, for example, they may um, have the ability to work with construction companies, but not business services. So, um, again, when you go onto the UCAS website, all of this is, is explained on there. Um, and you can actually go in and see which particular industry codes and which standards um, a certification, accredited certification body um, has been um, approved for. Um, so that, that's an important bit of terminology there actually when when explaining what we do so as I said and we'll, I'll come on to this in a moment um, we are not accredited by UCAS so we are a certification body providing ISO certification um, the likes of BSI is a certification body that is accredited by UCAS and they offer ISO accredited certification body some people interchange the terms accreditation and certification actually the terminology would be accredited certification that BSI would be offering. Um, they would not be offering accreditation and it's a slight nuance with the terminology but it's, it's an important one to, to pick up on. Um, the only people that can become accredited would be the certification bodies. So BSI is accredited by UCAS, company X is certificated by an accredited certification body such as BSI. Sounds all very complicated, but I, I promise as you um, kind of as I go through the, the different um, uh, processes in, in a moment of ways of getting there, it'll hopefully become a lot clearer. So just as a reminder, U, UCAS stands for United Kingdom Accreditation Service. We as an organisation, as I say, quality services are not accredited by UCAS. Um, and I'll come on um, to a moment as to, to why that is. With regards to who needs it, um, generally, you look at companies in the aerospace, aeronautical, or working um, quite high up in the defence industry, or potentially working as direct suppliers to large internationals. Um, so customers that, that approach us that, that tell us that they, they need to have um, a UCAS accredited certification uh, rather than a non-UCAS accredited certification, generally work in these sorts of industries. Uh, that is definitely not extensive or decisive. Um, it's just an example. Um, what I would say is that the company itself decides whether they require an accredited ISO certification over a non-accredited version, um, mainly dependent on their external pressures, so what their um, customers are requesting off them. Um, and we can help identify that, so we can look at tenders, we can you know, have conversations with, with, with businesses um, and help you decide whether it is um, the UCAS accredited service that you need or whether you can go down the non-accredited route. Um, what I would say rule of thumb generally if you are a second tier supplier uh, rather than a, a direct supplier to a large international business normally the non-accredited route um, is sufficient and there are some um, kind of differences in cost if you like with regards to which route you go. So sometimes um, I get asked, um, particularly uh, by my internal team, um, why would a company opt for accredited certification over non-accredited or, or vice versa? Uh, what I'd normally kind of say is normally they're in one of the above industries I just mentioned, so aeronautical, aerospace or defence. They might have clients or external stakeholders that have demanded that they go down the accredited route. Sometimes it's as simple as they didn't know there was another way. They've had ISO certification for so many years, 20, 30 years. And, you know, our non-accredited industry has probably been going about 32 years, 30, maybe 35 now. Um, and, you know, some companies have held certification for as long as that or even longer. And, and at that point in time, they didn't know there was another way that they could they could achieve ISO certification. And sometimes, as with all industries, um, there is a feeling that if it's not UCAS accredited, it's not worth it. Um, you know, I'm going to sit here and, and, and say that's not um, what, 
we've found from our customers, you know, our, our customers find the non-accredited route um, an accessible and affordable way to achieving ISO certification. Some move over to UCAS um, accredited certification in the future, some never do. Um, but what I would say is that it's, it's always the choice of the individual company as to what it is um, they want to achieve. So coming back into some diagrams now, just to try and um, cement this uh, a little bit more. So what you've got on the uh, left-hand side here is the UCAS, uh, or we say in the UK, UCAS accredited route. Um, so what let's call third-party accredited ISO certification. And what you have on the um, right-hand side here is third-party ISO certification, so the non-accredited route. Um, so if we take the accredited route to start with, We'll always start with the company. So uh, the company, just say for example, it's a you know construction-based company based um, in the in the UK. Uh, they may be looking uh, to achieve ISO certification. The route that they would take, they would approach some form of independent consultants, such as ourselves. So that's where we fit into this this part. Uh, they would uh, let us know which standard they were looking for, you know, give us all the reasons as to why they're looking for it. Um, and effectively, we would work with them as a consultant to implement that standard for them. Once they've got to a point where we would be satisfied that, that they have implemented the standard and they've been running it for, say, three to six months, sometimes nine months, depending on um, their, their time frame, uh, we would then recommend when they would be ready to go forward um, to one of the um, UCAS accredited partners, such as um, BSI, SGS, LRQA, NQA. We actually work particularly with NQA and Interface, um, and, and sometimes, um, you know, we can help uh, get quotes and things and kind of project manage that, that whole process for, for companies. Um, so at the stage where they've implemented the, the systems, we would be bringing in the uh, accredited certification body um, to come and audit them. Once they've achieved that certification, they would then um, be um, ISO certificated by an accredited body. Um, now, just to kind of point out here, this, this link between all the organizations, um, UCAS are in the background auditing these companies here, BSI, SGS, and QA, um, and in turn, they are signed up to the International Accreditation Forum that we spoke about earlier. Um, so effectively, this is how the money, I suppose, goes up the chain. So company um, would kind of uh, pay fees to us to help implement, implement the standards. They would then also pay fees to this company here to audit and provide the certification. These companies here would pay UCAS to audit them and provide their ability to provide the accredited certification. And I'm sure there's some um, kind of financial um, agreement between UCAS and the IAF. So, so that just kind of shows um, there that the kind of the chain, I suppose. With regards to non-accredited, um, there's a lot less people involved. Um, so company would approach a company such as ourselves. Uh, we would do then everything for them. We would implement, we would certificate, and then we would audit on an ongoing basis. Um, and again, this is very dependent on what this company here, so what the end, end kind of user wants or needs for its own client base. So it's never our decision whether a company needs to go whichever of these routes, as you can see, we, we, we are involved in both sides. Um, it's very much dependent on the company um, and what it is uh, they're looking to achieve from their certification and, and you know, what they're doing it for. So, so we tend to investigate this with companies. Every company we speak to, we investigate which route they need to. Um, it's, it's two different routes to achieving the same thing in some respects. It just depends whether it needs that UCAS badge or not. So again, just to, to kind of um, explain the process in a little bit more in depth. So, um, so company A represents a consultant such as ISO QSL and company B is the UCAS approved body. So this first route here is where UCAS isn't needed. So where it's non-accredited certification. So we would conduct the gap analysis, the implementation phase, the certification and the ongoing auditing. Um, and because I was uh, kind of non-accredited certification is a, is a forward looking process, we can do that within about eight weeks. Um, to get them to the point of certification and then ongoing auditing and support and consultancy to um, really help them embed that, that system into their business. 
um, as opposed to the um, UCAS route, which uh, just by the very nature of it, it, it is a little bit longer. Um, so we would um, normally go in and conduct a gap analysis in the implementation phase. Um, and then the company would gather, say, three to six months of evidence. Um, so that could take anything from three to nine months, that whole process. We would generally go back in and do a reassessment um, just to make sure that they are ready for their, their assessment by the accrediting body. Um, so company B would step in at this stage. Um, so we would, we would generally help project manage that and get uh, ask company B to come in and, and conduct what they call a stage one assessment. So this is where company B is the UCAS approved certification body. So if we take it as interface, um, for example, or, or BSI. Potentially, there may be some um, other work that needs to be completed. I mean, we, we, we try and aim for a first time um, approach, but occasionally there are um, a few little bits that the, that the company needs to just tidy up prior to their stage two assessments. Um, and then what we're aiming for is first time successful certification um, of the company by the UCAS body. Um, and then generally we're brought back in to do the internal auditing or the regular support to make sure that the systems are maintained and the UCAS body come in once a year to do the uh, recertification audit. Uh, they generally run to a three-year cycle. Um, so they provide a three-year certificate, which is validated on yearly surveillance audit. So um, the company does have to be audited by the UCAS body at least once every 12 months. Um, and generally we go in and uh, before that and, and just make sure that everything's, um, it, you know, that the company's doing things on a regular basis in the right way. Um, in order to to make sure that they pass their their surveillance audit. So, in the scenario of a business needing um, a UCAS accredited certification um, or by by a a body that's accredited by UCAS. Uh, we would be able to offer the implementation of the management standards. So um, actually going in and, and kind of guiding the business um, through the compliance areas, through all those clauses and, and making sure that they are fully compliant. Uh, we would be able to offer regular reassessment and consultancy of the systems in preparation for their um, audit or their surveillance audit every year. We'd be able to provide, um, the, well, I suppose it's, yeah, it's, it's ongoing independent auditing at regular intervals. Now, this is to assist more with the, the ongoing maintenance and making sure that it probably, probably, properly is embedded into the organisation. Um, sometimes businesses think they can run a business and a management system separately. Um, our job is to, to actually make sure that it's fully embedded to make it as efficient as possible. And actually, you get the most out of the standards if um, the business um, has embedded it fully into its culture um, and into the way that they do things. We can also train internal staff to become internal auditors. So there is a requirement uh, within the standard that an internal auditing is done. Um, as I said, sometimes that is, is uh, completed by independent consultants such as ourselves. Um, but we actually always recommend that a business looks to train some of its internal staff to become internal auditors because, you know, there should be a, a, an ownership of the, the management system by the company that's implementing it. Um, you know, it's, it, there should be a point in time potentially where, you know, we've whilst we've helped set up the systems and maybe maintain them um, for a couple of years, businesses should really be um, getting to grips with this themselves and, and being able to, to kind of become self-sufficient on it really. So summary on UCAS, accredited certification um, is what's called a regulated, regulated market certification and non-accredited certification or just certification is a self-regulated market. Um, we've made a commercial decision um, not to um, be UCAS and, and that's mainly because we actually uh, really enjoy the implementation and consultancy side of our business. Um, we also know that there is a market out there for non-accredited certification, again for those businesses um, that find it too cost prohibitive um, to go down the accredited route. Um, you know, we, we understand that, that there's a place um, for us. We have about 480 odd um, customers and about 800 certificates on the marketplace. Um, you know, some of which work with local and um, national uh, government uh, bodies as well. So, um, you know, realistically, um, the requirement for UCAS um, can differ from, from customer to customer. And, and it's just about us understanding um, each individual customer's needs um, with regards to, to what's the best route for them. Um, we feel that 
by being able to be the consultants, we, we do gain a better understanding of their business and we don't come in as the big, bad, scary auditors. Um, we're actually there to partner um, with, with companies to, to help them achieve the most um, from these standards. And, and that, that's really what we're all about is making sure that our customers um, gain the maximum benefit. Um, and, you know, it's not just about having a badge on the wall and having a certificate on the wall. It, it's actually about all of those internal efficiencies that, that the ISO management systems can provide. Um, so if a company approaches us and they uh, need UCAS, it's, it's, it's something that's been laid out by, by one of their, their key customers. Uh, the first thing we'll do is look at what stage you're at. So we will, um, you know, maybe ask a few questions about, you know, what you've already got in place. Have they already implemented the standards? Do you have an external consultant or any skills in house? Um, because realistically, um, you know, a company that's already implemented the standard realistically just needs to go straight to a UCAS body potentially, which we, again, we could, we can facilitate that. Um, but um, very often um, we get approached by, by companies that, that literally haven't, haven't done anything on this, on this journey. Um, so if they're in the very beginning stages and haven't fully implemented the standards and don't already have a consultant in place, um, all the skills in house, uh, we can help support you, um, you know, with what you need. And, and generally that starts off with, with some form of gap analysis so that we can just identify, you know, where the company is so that we know how to get you um, to where, um, you know, to the full compliance of the standard. So just a little bit about what consultancy actually is with regards to um, ISO quality services, the, the sort of consultancy. Consultancy covers a wide range of um, uh, topics, I suppose, um, but just to kind of narrow it down into what we do. So a consultant is, is classed as an experienced individual that is trained to analyse and advise a client in order to help that client make the best possible choices. So we're, we're very much kind of facilitation as well. Um, consultancy is a professional practice that gives expert advice within a particular field our field being ISO management systems. So um, the main types of um, consultancy, sorry, that, that we offer would be implementation and the establishing of a management system, uh, a gap analysis and assessment. So finding the gaps against compliance of the, the individual clauses of the standard. Uh, we can help create written procedures if needed. We can help with one-to-one -one coaching on the management systems and we can help with internal auditing. So, so those are kind of, I suppose, the five key areas of consultancy that, that we can provide. Companies that generally require consultancy would be where there's no in-house resource to implement the system. So they don't have the expertise potentially within the business to, um, to implement. So they, they want to kind of outsource that to, to us. Um, they might already have um, a certification with another provider and they're just looking to improve it, to um, make it more efficient, um, or they need more support than what's in our normal non-accredited certification package. Um, but generally, um, we, we do get some get kind of requests from customers who want us to, to look at what their current systems look like, you know, or they might already be um, you know, accredited with BSI. Um, and, and really, uh, they want us to just help streamline them uh, they might be companies that are with us or with another non-accredited provider, but they want to move over to a UCAS provider. Um, and we can help with that. We can help get quotes. We can help prepare for stage uh, one audit. Or they could be very large companies who don't fit into, if they're to come as a normal pricing structure. So um, when it comes to, to non-accredited, we have a, a, a quite a fixed fee dependent on turnover. Companies that exceed um, that turnover sometimes need a little bit more of a bespoke tailored package. Or they could simply be requiring um, uh, some assistance to help plug a bit of a shortfall. So they may have had somebody within the business that was looking after their, their ISO um, management systems. Um, and that person has, has either left the business or has moved roles um, and they just need to kind of plug that shortfall. Uh, we, can, we can be there for, for short term support as well. So uh, there are lots of independent consultants out there on the market. Um, you know, we pride ourselves on, on being one of the, the most well-established. We've been trading over 20, well, 22 years this year. Um, so, so I suppose some of the reasons um, people use us or people say why they use us, uh, we're independent, therefore we can be flexible to client requirements. Uh, all of our team are expert assessments, either qualified by experience or they actually hold IRCA, which is the International Register of Certified Auditors certification. 
they all have some form of industry backgrounds. We have a team of dedicated account managers who are fully trained to handle inquiries. So you don't have to wait if, if you're with a, in like a, a one man band consultant, they might be out with clients all the time. We have a dedicated office team that are there to, to answer queries and help and support customers. Um, we're often described as a hassle free time and cost effective service by our clients. And we do enjoy proven high scores of, of customer satisfaction. You know, we're all about making businesses better. Um, that's kind of our, our mission, if you like, um, is to make businesses better through the implementation of ISO management standards. Um, and we do that as working in partnership with our customers, hence, hence why we, we get really good uh, feedback with regards to how we work with customers um, in that way. Um, so if there are any questions, please do pop them in the question and answer function uh, via Zoom. Uh, in the meantime, I've just popped here um, the info at email address that you can contact us on, or you can go to our website, or you can phone us at our office. Our head office is based in Worcester, um, so we're in the Midlands, so we're quite central with regards to UK. We do work internationally as well, um, so please do get in touch if you have any requirements, either for UCAS accredited certification um, or for non-UCAS as well. So I'll just give it a minute or two just to see if there are any questions. No, I think that's all covered then. So thank you very much for joining um, and please do get in contact if you have any questions.